and Vanessa Joy here. What we're gonna do today, we are at the beautiful Watermark Bar here in Manhattan. This is kind of a secret spot. You can tell really how empty it is. Look at it, it's gorgeous, but there's this like beautiful string lights. We've got the blue background. It's a little bit darker than I wanted it to be, to be honest, but we started late. It's okay, because we're gonna test low light. That's what we're doing. I have both the R5 and the R6, the brand new Canon full free mirrorless cameras. And a big question that I get about both of these is how do they handle low light? Well, we're gonna test that. We're gonna do some low light portraits with both of these cameras. I'll try to keep the settings somewhat the same, but I also wanted to show you what it would be like with two different lenses. So I have the EF 135 2.0 lens, and of course it has the adapter that I can put on to adapt the EF lens to the um, mirrorless line. And then I have the RF, the lens that this camera's meant for, 24 to 105 f4 lens. So I definitely have a difference between apertures, but let's just do some some, some shots, not real shots, shots, pictures. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We're gonna start off with the R6 first. I'm gonna turn it on and just point it in their general direction. The nice thing about this is I do have face detection on. So if I just tap on Marissa's face, you can see we have Marissa here. You might notice her. Daniel usually works with Marissa. All right, so we can just test and see how it's tracking her face. It's awesome. All right, right now, I'm at 8,000 ISO. It looks okay, but I'm gonna go down to 100 on my shutter. That looks about good as far as exposure goes. And then I think I'm gonna go ahead and go down on my white balance just to cool it down a little bit so it looks a little bit natural. And it's nice because we have the contrast between the blue background and these orange string lights. So I'm just gonna shoot like this. Normally I would put this up to my face but it's kind of nice to just let you guys see what's happening as I shoot, right? And we have in-body stabilization, so 125th of a second on my shutter. Look at her laughing, she's so cute. It's not a big deal. You know, I do have my elbows stabilized on the table right now. <laughs> so cute. Nice, all right, so let's zoom into one of these. So we're at 8,000 ISO, 8,000 ISO. Let's just go ahead and zoom in. Let's see how it handled focus and see how it handled, look at that. It's freaking gorgeous. It's incredible. So we've got good focus, but if we zoom all the way in, you can definitely start to see the noise a little bit. You always look sort of towards lines and then solids also. And you can see a little bit of the noise, but I'm not mad about it. That's for sure. Not mad about it at all. All right, let's switch lenses. And this, let's see, we were at 8,000. Yeah, 8,000 ISO, so let's go ahead and set the R5 to 8,000. And we'll mess around with the shutter, probably have to lower it quite a bit because I only have an F4 lens on here. Let's go ahead and turn this on. All right, 8,000, oh good, that's what I had on here. 8,000 ISO, by the way, I am in the standard profile, so if you go to your profile, it's the standard picture style. And those are like the settings, I'm just going here, so you can see like sharpness, everything is at its base so contrast is in the middle saturation things like that all right because that's what you're really looking at right now jpegs okay so that looks okay i think i have to go down to probably a 40th 30th of a second and we're at 105 so we're going to get a little bit more of the scene and right now it's on the back of this is Irwin's head so i just have to tap and let them know let the camera know that that's the subject i want to focus on cute Let's get a little bit more of the scene here. And actually we'll zoom in as much as we can so that we can get something similar when we zoom in and look at the noise. All right, so this is where we were, right about there. This is at 105, so it is a little bit further away, but this is a 45 megapixel camera versus the R6 is just a 20 megapixel camera. Not just, but it's a 20 megapixel camera. So we have, more room to zoom in. I don't know, it's hard, it was hard to tell, but I think this is actually handling it cleaner. Let's put them both side by side. So there's that one, and we got this one on, and we'll press play, and we'll zoom in on that last picture. One. This is what it's about. It's all about pixel peeping, right? All right, so here we go. There's both. On your right is the R5, and on your left is the R6. Can you guys tell much of a difference? Not that bad. We'll have to put it on a computer later. But overall, 
I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing. A lot of people ask me, you know, what camera do I want to go for? Do I want to go for the R5 or the R6? And I think the answer lies in what camera you already have. So if you're shooting with the EOS R, for example, you're already in the mirrorless line, you're already there, you're at 30 megapixels, I think you would probably want to go into the R5 because it will feel more like an upgrade versus going down in megapixels. Now, there's nothing wrong with the 20 megapixels in this camera. I shoot weddings with the 1DX Mark III, and that is the same sensor that's in this R6. But if you have a camera like the 6D Mark II and you want to jump into mirrorless, you want to upgrade, I would say your upgrade from the 6D Mark II would be the R6. So it really depends obviously on budget, but also on what you're used to already. What from the camera system that you have, you would consider to be an upgrade versus maybe a parallel move or maybe you think of it as downsizing pixels and you don't want that. So things to think about. I will say I like the 135 lens a little bit better. But I think I like the way the R5 handles better, so I'm going to switch lenses on these. Uh, and I'm going to turn the camera off to do that because, as I learned this weekend on my weddings, you really need to do that, otherwise you're going to risk getting something into your sensor. The Canon cameras, let me just show you here, the Canon cameras, when you shut off the, the camera, that shutter curtain comes down, protecting the sensor a little bit. But if you have that turned on, you will see the sensor, which I'm not doing for you because I don't want to dirty my sensor. All right, let's do a couple more like this. So I'm using now the combination is the R5 with the 135 millimeter 2.0 EF lens and the adapter. So that's what we've got going on because I can go all the way down to 2.0, which I'm going to go ahead and do that. That's what I want. I don't need to be all the way down at a 30th of a second. So let's go ahead up or we can test the image stabilization. Why don't we do that? Let's lower the ISO to 5,000 and then we will lower this to, let's go for 1 25th of a second. Now we do have to find a spot where Marissa is not moving too much because you know, camera shake is one thing. If I'm shaking the camera, it's gonna help that, but it's not gonna help any motion blur by my subject. You know, it stabilizes the camera, doesn't stabilize the subject. One thing I like about this camera, you notice how I just went from horizontal to vertical, and it still knows to look at Marissa and not change anything. Great. So I'm specifically waiting until she stops moving a little bit so that I'm not introducing motion blur by my subject while I'm counting on the in-body stabilization of this camera to hold the camera still and give me a sharp picture. So what we ended up at, let me just give you the settings, we're at ISO 3200, <laughs> F2.0, and 1 25th of a second on a 135 millimeter lens. So let's see, let's see if it did a good job. <laughs> All right, this shot, actually Marissa was moving a little bit, but that's pretty sharp. Let's go through these. There we go. This one, I know she wasn't moving at all. That one she was, see the difference? She moved a little bit here, so it's a little blurry. But if we go to this where she really didn't move, look how sharp that is. 1 25th of a second on a 135 millimeter lens that is phenomenal so you have two factors here when you want to do low light portraits you have two things that are helping you out here not just the low light capability of the camera but the image stabilization in there that'll help you go lower on your shutter so that you don't have to go as high on your iso you know it's great that you can but ultimately a lower iso is going to give you a cleaner image so the lowest that you can go is always going to benefit you I decided to edit my favorite photo of Marissa here in Lightroom using my preset brushes and tools. I'm using Joyfully Simple here and then going over to the local adjustment brushes to do things like whiten and saturate the eyes, smooth out the skin, and add a little bit of dodging and burning if I need it. Here's some before and after shots so you can see what I do. It's not a lot, it's subtle, but definitely cleans up the images. You can grab my presets and brushes in the link below or just copy the settings on the right. Up to you, but grabbing them below definitely saves you a ton of time. All right, let's go ahead and wrap this up. I hope that was helpful. I like these pictures. These are cute. So this is what we've got, and I really like the difference between what she's wearing and the background. She's got a nice warm light on her, but the background is a nice bright blue. A lot of fun. I think I'm going to move and just do a couple more because it looks like there's a crown on her head right here. You always got to look at your background, see how it looks like there's a crown on her head? So I'm just going to 
do a couple more, but move a little bit, and now I won't have my elbow stabilized, so we'll see how this works. Maybe I can balance on my knee. That'll be better. Perfect. Oh, yes. Look how sharp that is. And she was actually moving a little bit. 125th of a second. I'm sorry, one, yeah, 125th of, not 125th, but <laughs> 25th of a second. Not bad. And now she doesn't have a crown on her head anymore, so that's good. <laughs> so we got some great low light portraits of her. I'm gonna go crazy and actually do a picture closer to her so we can get a nice shot where she's aware of it. We're trying to be stealthy in the restaurant here. You're right, but I do. Hey, Marissa, I'm going to get like an actual picture of you, so. Yeah. <laughs> so hold really still. Put all your hair in front. Yep. I get it now. Love that. Hold still. We're at a really slow shutter speed. Beautiful. All right, we're going to go back and hide. These are really pretty. Oh, my goodness. Not only, so here's what happened here that makes this as dreamy as this looks. Not only do we have a nice low shutter speed, so I'm sorry, a nice low aperture so that everything around her is really blurry, but she wasn't moving, but her hair still was blowing a little bit in the wind, and you can see a little bit of motion in her hair there that just makes this super dreamy. But while her eyes are tack sharp, and those were the same settings. All right, yeah, see our hair's moving there? Just a little bit of motion. And now it's a gift. <laughs> anyway, I hope you like taking a look at the low light capability of both of these cameras side by side and what it can do and how you can play with it. Uh, and now we're gonna have some food and drinks. So I am Vanessa Joy here on Instagram. Make sure you congratulate Adorama TV on their one million subscribers on YouTube. And I'll see you next time. Bye.